in short order, that dude was working on top and uh, putting on really, really good matches. Uh, he winds up teaming with um, uh, Chris Jericho some, and uh, they have a really phenomenal match, and a lot of people uh, still talk about it. It was a match where uh, he teamed with Jericho against Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's a match that your good friend Dave Meltzer still calls one of the best matches in the history of Raw. That's the one where um, Triple H tore the quad and, and then came back in January of 02. Anyway. Uh, and with, finished the match. It finished the match, by the way, yeah. Uh, he um, he emerges kind of quickly as being the top guy of the group. And, of, uh, of course, eventually Eddie catches up. But to me, it seems like when you guys automatically put him in there with Kurt Angle uh, at WrestleMania 7, uh, or 17, rather, and then he's in this big-time match uh, on Raw against Triple H, and, you know, fresh off of um, Jericho's big push, and he's in there with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's still just white hot. You guys decided pretty early Chris Benoit's the dude. Do you remember who backstage was kind of the driving force for him? Nobody's told me this. I'm freestyling. It feels like Pat Patterson would have loved him. I think everybody loved him. He was, you know, he was a wrestler's wrestler, busted his ass. He was solid as hell. And... He was one of those guys kind of like Bret Hart. He wasn't leaving the ring till he till he had his match. And he was going to tell the story. So he was just a hell of an all-around talent. Wasn't the best on the mic. But uh, he was great once that bell rang. You know, Bruce, I don't know what to say. I'm kind of feeling a little weird about talking about Benoit, so let's just kind of hurry this along. <laughs> uh, I've, I agree I, with you. I don't know what to it, say. Uh, obviously, he was a hell of a professional wrestler, but it feels weird to kind of champion how great he was, given everything that happened. But let's fast forward. Uh, the build happens. People think he deserves the world title long before he actually gets it. He holds a variety of every other kind of belt that there is. He is one of the unsung heroes. He's one of the workers' workers. I mean, just a, a real... Um, phenom in that regard. WrestleMania 20, he finally gets his shot. He's in the last match on the card, which I don't care what anybody says. For my money, that's the real main event of WrestleMania, what goes on last. And he beats Shawn Michaels and Triple H in the middle of the ring. Big deal. Lots of confetti. He finally wins the big gold belt. Uh, it is, you know, a smart mark like me's. Holy shit, it finally happened moment. Uh, it, obviously a big moment in the ring after when he's celebrating with Guerrero. Carry me through your thoughts about that match and that moment and try not to let the stain of what would happen a few years later totally taint it. Can you do that? Well, you know, uh, the the personal issues aside and everything, it, it at that time, professionally speaking it was a moment and it was a time to, to try something else and chris had obviously worked really hard to to attain that that stardom and get where he was so like you say i, I think to a lot of people it was yeah finally you know we, we they did something right because <laughs> god knows everything else we did else we did was wrong um but it was it was just a culmination, you know, right place, right time, and it was time to make the move. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, you get into real life, and real life happens, and it's just a damn shame. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible tragedy that I don't think that words can even express the, the, the sorrow and the tragedy of, of everything that took place with with him later on in life. So I think everybody knows that story and and we can go on from there. And, and let's let's get to the to me the the one that emerged we'll get there. of the of the I biggest. Got, let me ask a couple okay, more questions. Okay, go questions. ahead, ask your questions. So Benoit uh loses the belt that summer to Randy Orton. Uh so he wins at no four, loses it at SummerSlam to Randy Orton. This is right around the time that they're about to do the whole evolution turn on Randy Orton, the thumbs down thing. Well, no, I guess that's, yeah, that's right. Thumbs down with Triple H. Um, why did the belt come off of Benoit so quickly? That's not that quick. I get that. But 
he never holds it again in that regard. And um, it's not that long of a run, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's only like five months, maybe. Well, a lot of guys held it for two weeks. But, I, I, but here, it, here's it, my question. He had to run with it. it. It was time to change. It was Randy coming up and doing something different. But for the belt not to go back, well, did you guys not consider? Don't give me the shrug. Well, was he, <laughs> was he not? Why do some guys get more opportunities than others? Did he? Not it depends get, on what they draw. It depends on that's fan what I interest. To go it to. depends on merchandise sales. It, it depends on how many tickets are purchased to see them when they're the only featured name on there. There's a ton of reasons. So the question is, and I think you just answered it. And I just want you to be clear about it. Benoit wasn't the draw that you guys hoped he would be with the chip, with the belt. I don't think so, no. I don't think that he was as big of a draw as, you know, predecessors or those that came after. So, no, I don't think he was. So, do you think it was Vince kind of caving to what the Smart Mark fans wanted when they when they did no, the crowning he, he, moment at WrestleMania? he didn't cave to anything. He had a feeling that here's a guy with some momentum. Let's see what he Let's can do. Let's see what he can do. And, and so, when it when it doesn't work... He goes back to his original thinking. and When it didn't work, let's try something else. Yeah, and he tried something else for Randy Orton. I mean, he was definitely in star-building mode at the time, and he gave a shot to Benoit, so then he gave a shot to Orton. Right. Obviously, it stuck with Orton more so than Benoit. Um, I can tell by the way you're trying to move on. You don't want to talk about anything else with Benoit. Can we talk Not about really. It? Can we talk about it another time, or is that something you never want to talk about on the show? I'm not really that comfortable talking about it. Okay. Well, let's talk about, uh, I'm, I'm just going to give you a pass on that. Everybody's going to bust my balls on Twitter, but I get it. Let's talk about it. You Eddie know what? Guerrero. It's history, and, and that's what it is. And, you know, a lot of it is very personal to me. Real, real quick, because um, I don't know if we're ever going to talk about it again, so I can't let it just go. When did you guys know? What? Come on. You're doing the tribute show for Benoit. You find out the bad news. He now shows a pay-per-view. You don't know what's going on. You find out the next day something bad happened. I think you guys found out on Monday. And then somewhere in the middle of the show, you realize, oh, In the shit. last half hour of the show. Okay. Do you remember, like, when you get that call, is it just like a punch in the stomach, your heart's in your throat, what the hell? kind of indescribable i mean it, it's yeah i mean word, words that one's that's hard to put into words but were, yeah. were you panicked embarrassed uh, well, shock yeah i mean it, it's just absolute shock yeah. you know you're dealing with a tragedy and then the tragedy turns to just sheer horror. Right. And the unthinkable is, you know, and, and frankly, didn't have, didn't even have all the details other than, you know, what we did have. And, and it just was, yeah, just horror, horrible, 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 horrible. But yeah, shock. Um, do you think he's in the Observer Hall of Fame? Do you think he should be in that? I don't know. I don't know what the hell constitutes an Observer Hall of Fame. So, well, WWE, but I, 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 he's, obviously he's can't not, be in he's not, He'll never be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Of course not. But, I mean, if there was a, a non-publicly traded Hall of Fame just based on the body of work, what do you get in? Or it's, hard, it's, it's hard. It's hard to include someone who was capable of doing what what he did. Right. Um, you have to. I think being human beings, um, having children, it's unthinkable, and it, it's just. Um, if I had a vote, I would. I would never have him a part of anything. You were friends with him before. Um, did he know your family? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Was that, in, in my head, he would have been 
somebody who would have been really nice to the kids and all that? Was that just a Absolutely whole weird Absolutely awesome. Deal? Absolutely awesome. And my, my children loved him, and I loved him.